The nip of the autumn breeze made Bruce shiver. He had always hated the wind, especially around hunting season. But he still always came out with his two buddies whenever he could. They always seemed to have free time, but Bruce could only tag along on occasion, and usually then. It was just with one of them, except during hunting season. Hunting season was the one time all three would be on a trip together, and for a full week of that. This is a good place to set up camp, Mike called out, as he jumped down from his ATV. Nice open area we can see for miles. We'll see any caribou that walks through any of those valleys. Mike looked over to Derek to see what he thought of the location. Yeah, we could set up here. Fantastic view as well. Derek took a moment to take in the view before he reached into his bag, fetching a water bottle and taking a long drink. You sure we ain't gonna piss off any miners? Mike gave a chuckle as he walked to the back of his ATV to unpack his tent. Bruce, I come here every year and I've never even seen signs of another person, let alone miners. Mike walked over to a flat area and put down his tent. Better start setting up. We got maybe an hour or so of daylight. By the time Bruce and Derek had unpacked their tents, Mike already had his set up and was starting on a fire. Man, how the hell do you put that together so fast? Been camping since I could walk. It's just second nature at this point. Mike looked up at Bruce with a smile before returning his attention to the fire. When the other two had finished putting up their tents, it was already dark, and Mike had a roaring fire. Where the hell did I put my beer? Derek asked himself while shuffling for his cooler. Ah, uh, just grab one for mine. You can give me one of yours later when you find it. Derek looked at Bruce with a sigh before going over to his cooler and grabbing a beer. PBR? Why'd you even buy this shit? Best damn beer ever. <laughs> Whatever, man. Better than nothing. Derek sat down near the fire with an unsatisfied humph. Shit, man. This has been a crazy fucking year. Derek cracked open the can and took a long sip. Yeah, no shit. Although I suppose it couldn't get much. Mike was quickly cut off by Bruce. Whoa, we don't want to jinx it now. The three of them chuckled, each taking a sip from their cans. Mike downed the rest of his beer before standing up and stretching. Well, it's getting pretty late, and I plan on getting up bright and early, so I'm going to hit the sack. Bruce then downed the rest of his beer as well, standing up and walking to his tent. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Night, you Mike then walked to his tent, but before walking in, he turned back to Derek. Don't forget to put out the fire before you go to bed. Derek gave Mike a nod, seeming satisfied. He disappeared into his tent. Morning came sooner than Bruce had hoped. Mike already kicking Derek awake. Come on, I saw a big group of caribou heading up north. It'll be quick, we can catch up to them. Bruce groggily got up, grabbing his rifle and backpack. By the time Derek was ready, Mike was already starting down the hill, whistling Dixie. Better catch up. He's not going to lose a chance of getting one because of us. The two looked at each other before following Mike down the hill with a sigh. They walked for about an hour before Derek stopped and looked at Mike. Could we take a short break? We've been hiking for a while. They're just over the next hill, I can feel it. Let's just keep moving. You guys go ahead, I'll catch up. Mike and Derek were so caught up in what they were talking about, they haven't even noticed that Bruce was staring at something off in the distance. Mike started towards the direction he thought the caribou went, but he hadn't even taken five steps when Bruce spoke up. Hey, Mike, I thought you said there weren't any mines around here. Mike stopped dead in his tracks before looking over to Bruce, confused. There isn't. Then what's that? Mike and Derek then looked to where Bruce was now pointing. Derek pulled out his binoculars to get a better look. Definitely looks like some kind of mine. 30 to 20 buildings with what looks like some old ass money equipment. Mike walked up to Derek and pulled out his own binoculars. Shit, you're right. That's really weird. I don't even see any roads coming from there. Should we go check it out? It only looks to be a couple of miles away. My curiosity has peaked. Derek turned to Mike. What about you? What do you think? I guess we could take a look, but let's make it quick. I still want to catch up to those caribou. Bruce took the lead, walking down the hill, the other two closely trailing behind. As they got closer, the distinct smell of burning coal filled the air. Bruce stopped for a moment, slightly confused. 
Who the hell uses coal anymore? Heating, power plants, some trains still use coal too. I could go on. Bruce shrugged before continuing up the hill and towards the compound. When they crested the hill, the compound came into full view. One large building sat in the center with a multitude of smaller buildings surrounding it, all appearing to be composed out of steel beams and plates of brass. Off to the side was an area that stored what was obviously mining equipment, but the machines all appeared to be steam powered instead of using any practical engines. When they reached the compound, Derek ran up to one of the machines and climbed inside, causing Mike to shout at him. The hell are you doing? Get your ass out of there! I'm just taking a look. I've never seen a steam powered excavator before. Bruce walked through the rows of machines, each of them seeming oddly larger than what would seem necessary. This shit is weird. Who the hell would leave all this equipment out here without at least a fence? Oddly, there was no response from the other two, but he could hear a pair of footsteps approaching him. Derek? Mike? Come on guys, this ain't fucking funny. The footsteps got closer and closer, until the shout from one of his buddies stopped the footsteps dead. Bruce, book it now! Bruce hardly hesitated, and shot off around the corner towards his friend's voices. What he wasn't expecting was a tall fairy creature with a dinosaur-like face, and wearing strange clothing to be standing in between him and his friends. It was too late to dodge the creature, so he slammed right into it, hoping that would stun it long enough for him to get away. Thankfully, it didn't give much resistance and got pushed to the side with relative ease, leaving a clear shot out of the area. Bruce weaved through the machinery and down the hill, his friends not far behind. The three didn't slow until they reached the bottom of the valley and were hidden in thick brush. After a few moments of incomprehensible babble, Bruce finally was able to sputter something out in between his heavy breaths. Did you see that thing? Mike let out a nervous chuckle. I more than saw it. I got it all on video, even when you laid them flat. No way I put them on the ground. He was way bigger than me. Bruce looked at Derek, who was still out of breath, only over nod, making Bruce smile a little. Either way, we should probably get the hell out of here. That thing probably didn't appreciate getting knocked down, and for all we know, it could be getting its friends to hunt us down. Mike's already got some video, so I don't see any point in sticking around when we have all the proof we need. Bruce and Derek both looked at Mike for his answer. Couldn't agree more. Let's get the fuck out of here. Mike then hastily started up the hill towards their camp, the other two following close behind. Julukik sat nervously awaiting the matriarch with his report from New Hope, the outpost on the New World. The report this time was more than simply symbolic, and it was quite thick with notes, observations and recommendation. He had sent a preliminary one a few days ago, and now had been summoned to give it in person. Come this way, the council is ready to hear you. Julukik raised his head, looking at the assistant and stood up, following her into the council chambers. Seated around the round table was an array of influential Dakar and important cabinet members, second only to the matriarch. All eyes were on him as he stood in front of the table, the assistant leaving after escorting him in and closing the large double doors on her way out. Esteemed members of the council, it appears we may have been wrong about other civilizations residing on New Hope. During a morning maintenance check, I came across three creatures that wore clothes woven out some foreign fibre or material. They appeared to be as shocked as I was and took off before we could do anything. I have included a sketch in my reports from memory about the creatures. He passed a small stack of papers in a folder to the nearest council member, sitting down at his right. Unlike us, they do not appear to have fur or scales except in areas around their heads. Their use of the thick clothing I mentioned is likely to overcome the climate. They were slightly smaller than me but moved with great agility and speed. One of them collided with me and sent me crashing to the ground. They are bipedal like us and also have two limbs that seem to function like arms. Unlike us, however, their faces are not elongated, instead they are somewhat round, with a pointy feature in the middle. We have yet to determine if that would be their ears or noses. Do you think they are hostile? Asked one seated next to his sister, likely a general of some kind, given the type of uniform he wore. It's a bit early to say, but they had a jump on me and ran away, so I hope it remains we can come to terms with them. Following the incident, I tasked Captain Orshok with sending the scouts out further to try and find some kind of settlement. They found something we believe to be a road, a well-travelled path that some type of wheeled vehicle has often passed on. What would you ascertain their level of technology to be at? It's hard to judge at this time, 
but we can assume they are past the medieval age, likely close to industrialization. For now, I don't think we need to worry too much, but I'd like to ask if we can request additional material to build a perimeter, at least fenced. Hmm. A reasonable request, Chief Science Officer Chilukik. We shall consider it. In the meantime, I will be sending an extra squad of soldiers to help. The large double doors burst open. A soldier, having pushed them open, I ran quickly to the general, whispering something in his ear. The general's face paled and became grim-looking. He thanked the soldier and relieved him of duty, addressing the council immediately afterwards. As of ten minutes ago, a trio of large, unidentified objects flew over the New Hope outpost. It was multiple kilometers high up in the air. It's not been confirmed if it is the Feek, but I'm hereby ordering a full deployment into the New World. We will begin immediately fortifying our position with walls and defensive steam turrets. With your permission, of course, Matriarch. She nodded her agreement. The other council members began speaking to their neighbours in hushed voices. Chulukik swallowed hard. Things are about to get much more complicated.